Welcome back, Mountaintop, and our e-church family and friends around the world. So glad you take time this evening out of your Wednesday. Set some time aside and let us go into the Word of God again. Go ahead, take a moment, share this with someone, and let's get the gospel out as far as we can. You are my reach, so that button share helps us spread the gospel. You know how to do this, so put some new friends on tonight, and let's share the Word of the Lord. I pray as you're tracking with us on this theme, uh, Let Go of Yesterday to take on today. I pray that it's blessing you as we build these lessons, as we build momentum, and listen to what the Lord is saying to us us in this season. Just a moment before we get into the lesson tonight, I want you to give attention to Vision Impact. Vision Impact. It's on our website. These cards should be in the lobby or somewhere with our ushers or sanctuary attendants when you come in. Pick up one of these cards and join us in Vision Impact asking everyone that can and will to participate in some small or large way. Some of you have already started to give, and we thank you for your gifts that you've already given, but I want you to be a part of the commitment, be a part of the pledge. This coming uh, week, we're going to be looking to, in the coming weeks, we'll be looking to gather these cards, and then we're also going to add it all up to see what we're going to be doing when we get to the 23rd of this month, Vision Impact. We're going to be collecting all of our commitments and reaching our goal of $1 million. Yes, I said it, a $1 million. Someone already have it, either in a, a, a policy or, or in, a, in, a, in an heirloom or somewhere. It's going to be transferred to the kingdom through you. God uses people to gain increase into the kingdom of God. So please be a part of this commitment. Be a part of this, this rally with us on Vision Impact Sunday on April the 23rd. Now, let's get into the lesson on tonight and see what the Lord is saying to us. Um, We left off leading you into the book of Hosea, talking about from the beginning of the book of Isaiah, God doing a new thing. I'm going to move on a little further in the book of Hosea tonight. I'm going to go to the second chapter in verse 14, I think down to verse 16 particularly. Um, As we look at this and we see that God does a new thing with Israel in this relationship with Gomar and Hosea, he also sees a new thing, see a new thing that he's doing in us, in Gomar's unfaithfulness and uh, Hosea still loving her and bringing her back. That's a new thing. That, that's what I called um, uh, the, 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 the love thing. It's, it's, the, uh, the, 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 it's the, the, the Lord of love is what I'm trying to say. The Lord of love. I'm going to get to the Lord of love a little later on, but... I want you to see this new thing develops within this relationship, and the lesson tonight builds off of the wonders of his love, God's love, in the, in the wilderness. The wonders of God's love, even in a wilderness. Our theme, letting go of yesterday to take on today. Um, look at the scriptures text in Hosea, verse four, second chapter, verse 14 uh, through 16. We see God's gracious eternal purpose being seen here in verse 14. Therefore, behold, I will allure her. I will bring her into the wilderness. and I will speak comfortable comfort to her. I will give her vineyards from there and the valley of Echar as a door of hope. She shall sing there as in the days of her youth, as in the days when she came up from the land of Egypt. Verse 16 of Hosea 2 and verse 16. And it shall be in that day, says the Lord, that you will call me my husband. No longer will you call me my master. God is comfortably speaking to Israel and always know that we see ourselves as the church truly as the seed of Abraham and spiritual Israel. So God is speaking comfort to her, to his bride, Gomar, Israel. He's speaking comfort to her in the wilderness. Here we see the gracious method of God's bringing her back to him. In the wilderness, he takes her, and there he he does something beautiful with his love in the wilderness. He allures her, the text says in Hosea 2 and 14. He lures her and brings her into the wilderness and speaks comfortable unto her. Uh, There in this place, he goes and he, he sets her aside in the wilderness. He persuades her, lures her to come into the wilderness and he speaks tenderly to her. Here is the Lord of love. 
how beautiful it is to see how the abundance favor of God is seen and displayed with an unfaithful wife and he lures her now to a place called wilderness and God shows her how he was going to bring her back to him. This influential love that he has is a wooing of her. The wooing is influencing her to come into the wilderness. He entices her. He persuades her. He brings her now into this place of desolence. And there he realizes all the things that were influenced her before doesn't work in the wilderness. Here you see the grace of God and the mercy of God as he lures her and woos her, Israel, into a difficult place, an environment where grace is, has to be shown and seen. Grace can't be seen sometimes when you got too much or you don't have your affections on the Lord. Now grace is seen wherein that you're in this uncomfortable place and the place wherein the conditions are not getting any better. But God brought you there. I'm trying to let someone see tonight that even when you're going through a wilderness experience and difficult time, realize that God is influencing everything. He's controlling everything. Your hearts have moved so far away from him as Israel because I want to bring you back. I could let you go, but I love you too much and I want to bring you back. The wilderness is called the wilderness of life, barren place, forsaken place. We thank God for the Holy Spirit that comes and lead us and guide us into every place and into all truth. The pleasure of God here is seen and the, the, the experience of God here is seen in this wilderness as he guides her, as he guides us. His tenderness teaches us. It lets us see the value of having his spirit and his presence in our lives as he directs, as he guides, as he moves us. The presence of God is so important when you're in a wilderness. You can see the wonders of his love when his presence is there. Exodus 33 and 15, Moses says it like this. If your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. Moses is getting ready to cross into something new, but he has to let go of what was yesterday. And now the Lord says, Moses, because of your actions, I'm not going to go with you. Moses says, please, if you're not going with us, then we don't want to go. That's where we're at today, church. If God is not with us, then don't let us go any further. But Lord, we need your presence to continue on. We need your presence, meaning we need your face to be with us. David says in Psalm 139, I cannot go anywhere from his presence. He's always there in the darkness. If I go to heaven or go into the pits of the hell, God is still there because his presence is everywhere. He is omnipresence. We need his presence to be with us. Watch him allure this woman, this bride into the wilderness. Watch him even in the wilderness speak tenderly to her. James 4 and 8 says, as we draw near to God, he draw nears to us. James 4 and 8. Drawing near is in prayer, meditation, and reading his word. We come close to him. If you're going through a difficult time or if you're going through a wonderful time, stay near and stay close to the Lord. Meditate on his word. Pray. Meditate on his word. Pray. Pray, meditate on his word, and let it sink down into your spirit. Comfortable, he speaks. The embracement of God is around us, giving concert, comfortable consolation and strength. Psalms 94 and 19, he says this, I love the scripture. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. Psalms, 1, Psalms 94 and verse 19. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation or your comfort brought me joy. It's in those wilderness places that God brings us, that he leads us to come bring us back to him. I need to hear the consolation and comfort of his word to know it's going to be okay. I'm going to get through this. The wilderness is a barren wasteland. It's a position in life that we all go through from time to time. But God doesn't leave us there. He longs to bring us back into a full fellowship and relationship with him. His presence needs to be with us. 
Psalm 16 and verse 11, he says, you will show me the path of life for in your presence, Psalms 16 and 11, is a fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. God is so merciful and purposeful in bringing us, all of us to destiny and purpose. They will kiss, they will come together. And it's in the wilderness places that he speaks comfortable to her. I want the Lord's words to speak comfort to someone tonight that is in a wilderness experience, that's letting go of yesterday to take on today. And God is moving you to something greater. God knows the depth is the deepest needs of all of us. Like a mother knows its child, even though each child is different by taste and diet, but the mother knows the need of every child. And our Heavenly Father knows all of our needs. So he's leading us. He wants to comfort our hearts and give us understanding. He wants to give us words of consolation in this wilderness, in this trials of life. Wilderness is that in-between place, moving between one blessing to the promise of destiny, comforting our God's words, even in this hard life that we're going through, comforting our God's words. Even in the doubtfulness, he is still, even in our doubtfulness, he is still faithful. I'm not sure why God allures us into different things. Some things we get into ourselves but even there, he makes that work together for the good and he brings us out of it. But when he is leading and bringing you to something, he has a plan and a purpose. And he understands that even in those difficult times, the difficult places, he's able to secure us and give us the victory. We all need comforting and comforting words and encouraging words, even to speak it to ourselves in difficult times. You have to be able to be assured if this is where I'm at, and God give me the words to go through this. In the book of 2 Kings, as we build off that one scripture in Hosea 2 and 14, the wilderness, I wanted to reiterate the 2 Kings 4 and 25 of this experience here of this Shudamite woman that Elisha sees her coming and he tells Geza, go and check her and see if she okay, is she okay. Geza runs to see her in 2 Kings 4 and 25 and 26, and he asked her, is it well with thee? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? She's dealing with an experience that she had not signed up for, but God set her up for a miracle. And she answered in 2 Kings 4 and 25, said, it is well. Can you see the power in those words that brings consolation? It is well. She speaks faith to her situation. Even though things are breaking and falling apart, she still speaks faith, it is well, or it is okay, it's all right, God is still in control. Comforting words, we all need them, especially in a wilderness. God said, I want to speak tenderly to you while you're moving through to your next place of blessings. He goes on to speak comforting words and he tells us we should have comforting words for friends. We should have comforting words for people that are going through a difficult times. It's very unpleasant to speak negative to someone when they're already are having a difficult day. Find something good to say. Like, I know that you know I'm praying for you and praying with you. It gives hope to know somebody is praying for you. I'm always here for you no matter what. That's a powerful statement of courage, encouragement for someone to speak those words. Here are the tender words the Lord is speaking to us and now we're speaking them to each other. I'm always here for you. And you should know that God is always there for you and I, no matter what. I'll be with you in six troubles and in seven, I won't forsake you. Comforting words of a friend. I pray you have peace during this difficult time. In this place, in this space, I'm saying to someone tonight, I pray you have peace during this difficult time. I know this is hard, but please know that I love you. How rich those words are to help someone to understand you're not alone. And God sees where you're at and what you're going through and is going to help you get through it. 
This is the God that we serve. Watch what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. says to us in comforting words. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, have, you have to keep moving forward. Whatever you do, you have to keep moving forward. You're in a wilderness, but not to stay. You're in between whatever you're in between, but not to live the rest of your life there. God is wooing you and going to show you wonders in the wilderness. In this place, I'm going to persuade her to come, he says in Hosea 2 and 14, back to the text. When I get her there, I'm going to speak tenderly to her. Let go of yesterday and take on today. I don't know how I'm going to do that, Lord. I'm, I'm afraid of, of moving anywhere. I don't want to move forward or backwards. I want to stay right here. You can't. You have to move forward. I'm leading you. I didn't bring you into the wilderness to leave you in the wilderness. I'm taking you, and I'm going to show you my wondrous love even in the wilderness. How do I go? How do I let go, Pastor House? How do I let go and let God? How do I do that? I hear what you're saying tonight, and I'm following the lesson, and your scripture is saying that God has led me into a wilderness. Sometimes because of my own actions and sometimes because of my rebellion and hard-headedness, he puts me in a place where I'm going to depend on him. I'm going to see his hand. No one else is going to come through like God can. Yes, he used people. He used men. But God's about to show me his mighty works, how he's going to make up the difference in all that I lack. How do I let go and let God? Number one, take a step to change your outlook. Remember Peter? He had to get out that boat. Remember Joshua? They had to march around those walls. Take a step to change your outlook. Number two, trust God in the process. I don't see him, but I'm moving, and I'm trusting him as the process goes. Number three, keep your eyes on him, the Lord, and what he has said, what he has said. Letting go of yesterday to take on today. It's in our text there in this wilderness. He's led them there, and, and she's wondering, what am I doing out here? He says, now I want to speak tenderly to her. All this is saying, trust the Lord. Don't let what you see make you forget what he said. Let me say that one again. I always like to use that one. Don't let what you see make you forget what he said. And it's vital, number five, I think it is, number five is, it's vital to let God be in control. You have to let him be in control. I know I'm saying a lot of nuggets in these, these narratives, and you can get, go back over the lesson again and pick them up. I may run through them one more time since I got a little time tonight. But it's vital to let God be in control. Reje reject worry, doubt, fear, and anxiety. If I'm going to let go and let God, I must reject worry, doubt, fear, and anxiety. Most people don't take any steps because they don't know all the steps. But trust God in this season. Believe him. Your faith-filled actions are seeds that you sow. Your actions are seeds that you sow. Remember, remember this. You're not a victim of circumstances. You can take steps to determine what kind of life you're going to live. You're not a victim. You're victorious. Take a step. Let the Lord lead you and guide you by his word. Be encouraged to know that God is with you and on your journey. You have to be encouraged. Let me go over these points again. Take a step to change your outlook. Number two, trust God in the process. Number three, keep your eyes on him and what he has said. Number four, don't let what you see make you forget what he said. Number five, it's vital to let God be in control. Reject worry, doubt, fear, and anxiety. These are keys to letting go of yesterday and taking on today. Be encouraged tonight. 
be confident in the Lord on this journey. Deuteronomy 2 and 7 gives a beautiful scripture there. And he tells them that it's my hand that's been leading you and that has blessed you. I've watched over you through this past, through this great wilderness for these last 40 years, and you have lacked nothing. He's telling God's, God's telling his people, Israel, I have been watching over you the whole journey, and you have lacked nothing. And I'm going to show you my wonders of my love, even in the wilderness, in this wilderness, letting go of yesterday and taking on today. God bless you tonight. May heaven smile upon you is my prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you for this word tonight. I pray that it moves through the airways and it comes to the hearts of we, your people, that it brings life and hope and peace. I pray that someone is strengthened knowing that where they are, you are the shepherd leading. And even if we've led ourselves astray, you're able to pick us up and bring us back. And this moment, in this hour, I pray, God, you have allured us. You have wooed us. And now speak tenderly to us. And let us speak kind to one another. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you tonight. Please, beloved, be encouraged. Lord willing, we'll see you real soon.